You know, I, I will commend uh, every, uh, the astronauts uh, on our program today, all three of them, have written books. And with all due respect to the other two astronauts who will be here, Mike wrote the book on writing books on flying in space. His book, Carry the Fire, which is now back on in print, is, is a beautiful, eloquent tribute to space with great technical detail and, and a great sense of uh, what the mission is all about. So uh, I, I recommend you read that. And one of the things you say in your book at the end, uh, which kind of struck me, is a mission like Apollo 11 is a mission that really never ends. Here we are 50 years later. You're still talking about it. And, and one of the, it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse in some ways. You have to answer the same questions over and over again. So I need to know right up front, what's your least favorite question <laughs> that you get from the likes of me? What was it really like up there? <laughs> what was what really like up there? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's interesting that question, like you've been holding out or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But having said all that, uh, I know um, the three of you each have had a different approach, and, and I'm speaking of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Uh, it, it, there are times when you prefer not to talk about it, there are times when you like to. Um, what's your feeling? 50 years later, now that you've had a chance to put a little time between you and the mission. How do you feel about re reliving it in some fashion for people like this? Well, I like to uh, talk about so many different facets of, you know, the, what's it like up there, what is what specifically, but I, I like to talk, I guess, uh, about Neil Armstrong a bit. Uh, um, he uh, and Buzz uh, were the remarkable crew members. They were, they were just wonderful. Uh, Neil was, um, I don't want to say the best of the bunch, but he was the best of the bunch. We were experimental <laughs> test pilots, uh, and he was uh, foremost among us uh, because of his flying experience with the X-15 rocket ship, which still today holds uh, speed and altitude records. He was a very intelligent man. He had wide uh, breadth of interests uh, far beyond uh, NASA or the space program. Centering on history, probably the history of science, but uh, around, uh, we were very fortunate after the flight of Apollo 11 to have a around the world trip. And Neil was our uh, our uh, spokesperson uh, at, for those occasions, and uh, wherever he went, he was a man of few words, but he had chosen them very carefully. He knew the background of the country we were visiting. He knew about. Uh, a lot about the people in their country. He, he welcomed, welcomed the audience to come with him aboard the spacecraft and fly with us. And I, I think he did that successfully. And uh, the thing that amazed me about it was that uh, I, I thought the reaction would be right. Uh, the, the Americans um, finally went to the moon. Instead of that, it was uh, we did it. We humans, we finally got together, we did something that is wonderful, we can all embrace it, north, south, east, west, rich, poor, everywhere we went, the, the reaction was, we did it, and I can't think of another achievement that has brought such unanimity of opinion about anything that we humans do here on Earth. It's an amazing irony because it was born out of Cold War rivalry. And in the end, instead of it being we won, it was like we all did it. And you get congratulations from the Soviet Union. Uh, that, that is extraordinary, isn't yes, it? Yes, I believe it. So let's, um, I, I know you talk about this sort of uh, daisy chain of events that have to occur to make a mission successful. And uh, there are any 